Um, finally, I want to talk about meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites. So first, a poll question, just to kind of try to disambiguate and untangle those terms. What are those terms? Okay, I'm now seeing the most votes for B, which is correct. So the uh, meteoroid is the thing in space. So the re way I remember this is because it's like asteroid, right? Meteoroid, asteroid. And then the meteor is the bright streak in the sky. So it's the, the thing that we actually see. And then the meteorite is if there's anything left over that hits the ground, then that's what we call the rock. All right. So um, meteoroids can be as either asteroids or they can be comets. Uh, but if we see a, a meteor that comes from a comet, then it's very likely that nothing will hit the ground because the comet is mostly icy and it, it will burn up. Um, small asteroids also burn up before they hit the ground. And so only the largest asteroids um, that, that hit Earth's atmosphere can make it all the way to the surface and become a meteorite. Um, meteor showers, you might be familiar with. I think the Leonids just happened like last week and the Perseids are my favorite. I watch them every August and, because it's fun to go camping and then you can lay out when it's not too cold and watch them. And the reason that they occur predictably uh, every, at similar times every year, well, the exact same time every year, is because we're intersecting parts of a comet's orbit where it's left behind patches of debris. And so when the Earth's orbit intersects that comet's orbit, then we see uh, a meteor shower. And so uh, the, you know, there's many different comets that have left debris in their various orbits. And so we get multiple types of meteor showers. Uh, the only kind of meteor shower that's not from a comet, as far as I know, is the Geminids, which is from uh, some asteroid debris. Okay, and if you have ever watched a meteor shower, um, I think it's actually hard to put together this picture, but generally they're said to come from a particular location in the sky, and their name is the constellation in the direction that they come from. So the Perseids come from the direction of the constellation Perseus. That's called the radiant is the point where they originate and they shoot out away from that in the sky, um, not because they're coming you know, out of that point from an explosion or something like that, but only because they're all coming from the same angle. And so they appear to diverge from that angle from a distant direction, just like kind of the train tracks appear to diverge from the same point. So in general, you can look in the direction of, a, of the radiant in or if, if you wanna watch a meteor shower, but it's better to just kind of take in the entire sky because they can still appear at any place on the sky. They just appear to come from that radiant point. And they are uh, you know, probably more bright as they get farther away from their source uh, because it takes time for, some, for the um, body to start to burn up and glow. And actually a lot of the light that we see is from the air getting compressed and ionized by the meteor itself, not necessarily from its uh, demise. Okay, so most of the meteors that we see come from pea-sized meteoroids, um, but we can sometimes see larger ones, uh, which we call fireballs. I don't know if you remember this in 2013, a meteoroid hit Chelyabinsk, Russia, and some people just, this is like someone's dash cam footage uh, where they actually captured that uh, the meteor. And so these big fireballs are really cool. I've only seen one in my entire life. Uh, hopefully you can see one sometime. They're, they're kind of random. Uh, well, all meteors are random except for meteor showers. And the very largest of these fireballs um, leave behind meteorites. And, uh, you know, it kind of behooves us to know about the uh, asteroids that could become uh, meteors because if they're big enough, they could actually cause damage. For example, this one in Chelyabinsk, uh, people went to the window to see what was this bright glow that was suddenly glowing outside. And then the shock wave from the meteor uh, shattered windows. And so a lot of people went to the hospital with injuries. Um, but things can be worse. A large enough meteoroid uh, could produce a meteor big enough to destroy a city. And you know, a large enough meteoroid could actually lead to, for example, the extinction of the dinosaurs. Uh, so uh, we have a kind of survey protocol in place looking for near-Earth asteroids, the ones that come close enough to, to result in these huge uh, meteor impacts. 
And we know about 90% uh, of the very large ones that could lead to catastrophic worldwide effects, but we know of less than 10% of the small ones. So uh, even this, you know, city destroying asteroids, we don't know the orbital characteristics of all of them. So this is something that, um, you know, NASA is actively working on for planetary defense because we do not want to be destroyed by uh, an asteroid. Okay, so the pieces that hit the ground fall into about three different categories. Uh, you have your stony meteorites that come from rocky asteroids. Um, and then you have irons, which come from metallic asteroids, and then stony irons, which come from some differentiated asteroids. And um, this is an image of the largest one, the Willamette meteorite. And it was discovered here um, by someone who then sold it to a museum, but it was actually visited by uh, the native people of the Willamette Valley, who are now the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde. Uh, ceremonially for many years before it was, you know, discovered by the pioneers. And uh, you, you'll notice when you look at these um, kind of iron meteorites that sometimes they have little holes in them. And that's because there's actually iron sulfide um, in the meteorite. And when that interacts with water on the earth, then it uh, produces sulfuric acid that eats into the meteorite. So um, when we find meteorites, it's not necessarily that they're unchanged. They can be changed by weathering on Earth and they contribute to their own weathering too. Um, the most interesting kind of meteorite is probably these stony meteorites, even though they're not as cool looking as the irons uh, because they can sometimes um, contain little primitive chunks uh, that have never been differentiated. So these primitive meteorites contain you know, bits of minerals that formed as is in the early solar system and are completely unchanged. So these are really interesting to look at and see if they contain things like organic uh, molecules that could have helped to seed the materials needed by life on Earth. Okay, um, if we want to know if a meteorite is primitive, then we can do radioactive dating on it. And when we do that, we find that most meteorites are four and a half billion years old. That's the age of the universe. So not the universe, the, the solar system. Uh, so it's by dating meteorites that we're able to pin down that age of the solar system, um, right? Because these are the original pieces. So if we know how old the original pieces are, then that's how old the whole solar system is.